Hello everyone, in this video we will be discussing about more questions of IT officer examinations and in this video we will mainly concentrate on computer network questions and there are some questions from other topic also. So let's see what are the question. Our first question is, while transmitting odd parity coded symbols, the number of zeros in each symbol is, okay, let, before uh, going to this we would say, see what is parity. Suppose we have 1, 0, 1, 1, so here we, for parity we would uh, count number of ones so we have your three ones so this is odd okay uh, if we have one zero one 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 so we would write it as even because here number of ones is even so for both the cases we are calculating number of ones okay we are not bothered about not zeros not zeros okay so number of zeros doesn't matter so the answer would be D, unknown. That is, while transmitting odd parity coded symbols, the number of zeros in each symbol is unknown. Okay, because for calculating, uh, for calculating parity coded symbols, we generally use number of ones. So number of zero doesn't matter. Okay, so it is D, unknown. Next, go to the next. For dialog control and token management, are the responsibilities of which layer? Okay, it is the responsibility of a session layer. Session layer. Okay, session layer is responsible for dialog control and token management. I'll make a video for all the OSA layer responsibilities. Okay, so you can go through it. Okay, it is a session layer. Next, communication circuits that transmit data in both direction at the same time. Okay, so we have uh, two systems. Okay, in a communication network or a communication circuit, and they are transmitting data in both direction at the same time. So this is known as full duplex mode at the same time as full duplex okay one at a time if it is like same time same time as full duplex okay one at a time is one at a time but both direction one at a time but both direction but both direction is half duplex is half duplex Okay, I have made a video for this in the computer network basics section, so you can see it. Okay, so next mode it is the answer is full duplex. Okay, the both both direction at the same time is full duplex. Let's go to another. Which of the following communication are best suited for interactive processing application? Okay, it is obviously full duplex because what is interactive interactive applications? Interactive application there should be some inter interaction between interaction between nodes. Okay, interaction means if there is node 1, there is node 2, they will able to communicate simultaneously. So this type of communication can is possible only with full duplex lines. So answer would be full duplex. Okay, so this is possible possible with full duplex lines only. The answer is full duplex. Okay, next more to the next question. The special type of gateway, here we are talking, talking about gateway. Okay, that can keep external users from accessing resources on LAN. Uh, LAN users access the external info is called. LAN, okay, suppose uh, we have, it is a gateway. Okay, it keep external users from accessing resources on LAN. So it is a gateway between the external users and external uh, LAN users access the external info. So the, there is some server, if someone over here want to access this, so this can block or this can allow some of the packets. So this can be done by a gateway only, okay, gateway can do that, gateway can do that, okay. So in the case of repeater, no repeater would not, it just repeat what it is sent to it okay and encryption is not because encryption is not a device or it is not a part of gateway hub it is also not there the answer is firewall firewall is a special type of gateway sorry firewall is a special type of gateway that keep external users from accessing resources on LAN users access the external info okay this is a firewall next answer the interactive interactive transmission of data within a time sharing system may be best used to see here the important way is time sharing time sharing so it is not time simultaneous it is one after the another that is a and b are communicating a is communicating with b and b is communicating with a it is interactive okay the main word here is time sharing time sharing means the communication by a 
and communication by B is shared shared but by time sharing but interactive but by time sharing okay so the answer would be half duplex half duplex that is while A is communicating B would not do anything while B is communicating A would not do anything that is time sharing okay so in the case in this case the main word is time sharing so we had marked half duplex let's see another it is a question from um, DBMS only so let's see the UML designation for a public class member is it is a plus sign so I'll tell you in UML the plus sign is used for public okay the minus sign is used for private and the hash is used for protected protected members of a class okay it can be a method it can be a attribute these can be methods or attributes okay this is a symbol so our answer is for public it is plus okay next what type of join is needed when we when you wish to include rows that do not have matching values Think, say for equation or equation also there must be the uh, condition matching condition is there equation contains a condition with equal to sign it has some condition okay we have equal to sign in that indefinite join is not the answer intermediate join is not that the natural join also there must be some common attributes common attributes should be there for natural join also so answer is outer join in outer join what we do is uh, the um, um, uh, the attribute for which the values are not attributes for which ma matching values are not there attributes not matching are filled with null or filled with null are filled with null so in outer join also we have left and out left and right outer join okay in left outer join the values from the left suppose we are joining r1 and r2 by an outer join okay this is this is outer join outer join if it is a left outer join okay so r2 if it is left outer join so the uh, all the tuples of r2 would be there left is all tuples of sorry r1 would be there would be there okay for left for right all tuples are r2 would be there would be there okay okay and non matching values are filled with non matching values are filled with non match values are null okay this is how it is the answer is outer join so let's move on to the next topic dash is a process of dash is a process of uh, process whereby media files such as videos start playing as they are downloading it is very easy you might all be knowing that is streaming streaming is it plays it start playing as they are downloading suppose uh, if, if it is even if it 20% is downloaded downloaded it starts playing okay no need to download full if only one person is downloaded it starts playing that is streaming so answer is a that is streaming when you visit website spyware is maybe substantially download and this is called okay when you visit a website whenever we go a website or whenever we try to download some software which is generally free softwares then some of the softwares that automatically downloaded and that type of softwares are known as drive by download drive by download that means whenever you download something it downloads with it okay it is a, such as it is a supplementary sort of thing it is drive by download so answer would be b dash maps domain name into ip address see it is dns is answer uh, dns is domain name system it is domain name system 
name system so it maps domain name to IP address okay domain name to IP address okay there are more terms such as ARP RARP okay these we will see in the next next uh, next videos or next slides okay I will put questions on these also these are also very important okay next this DNS which class provide larger networks okay uh, there are for these classes the cl for class let's see we have class A class B class C class D I'll see it with D only for class A all classes are made up of four octets that is 32 bits IP address 32 bit okay these all are 8 8 8 and 8 bits okay all four every class we have four octets okay okay for class class A the first octet is the network ID and the 24 bits the remaining 24 bits is host ID so the number of host in class A would be 2 to the power 24 minus 1 minus 2 actually the first and the largest address okay and for class B it would be and for class B two octet octets are network ID and these two are host ID so it is 2 to the power 16 minus 2 for class C it would be 2 to the power 8 minus 2 so number of hosts is larger in which class it is class A so for larger networks we would be using class A okay for larger network we would be using class A okay class A we would be using for larger networks okay so next go to the next question if a class contains pure virtual function then it is termed as okay let's see what is pure virtual function suppose we have a class class A it is, in, it is a C++ question so I will terminate with semi component pure virtual function is a function without a function body so I have to write it as virtual with a keyword virtual let the class be function be int fun okay so it is a pure virtual function okay when a class contains it a function should always be written in public so I'll write it like this only when a class contains a pure virtual function then this class is called an abstract class it's called an abstract class okay so in the, this case class A is abstract so for this the answer would be abstract if you want to understand the detailed explanation of pure virtual function and virtual function I have put some video also you can see that so class A is abstract class if any class say class B okay if it inherits if it inherits class A if any class B inherits class A and it does not implement the pure virtual function that is a pure virtual function then this also becomes an abstract class but if it implements a virtual function then it is not an abstract class so what is this there is a class A we have a class A over here class A is having a pure virtual function any class which has a pure virtual function is an abstract class so for this question the answer would be abstract class okay and if any class B which inherits class A does not implement the pure virtual function then that the child class also become an abstract class okay that is the concept let's see if an abstract class is inherited by a derived class suppose A is an abstract class A is abstract okay A, if A is inherited by class B okay then the derived class should provide definition for all pure virtual function yes it should provide definitions for all pure virtual function derive class also become abstract if it fails to implement the pure virtual function yes this is also true objects of the derived class cannot be created if it fails to implement pure virtual function okay this is also true what is the concept is an object of abstract class cannot be created object of abstract class cannot be created okay no cannot be created so if B inherits A if B if B inherits A and does not implement and does not implement pure virtual functions pure virtual function then B becomes extract then B also becomes 
abstract okay and c the object and the object of abstract class cannot be created so abstract uh, the object of derived class cannot be created if it fails to improve a pure virtual function so answer would be d that is all of this all of these are true okay this was also from c++ let us see one more question from this only a virtual function that has no definition within a base class is this is what we have de declared that is the pure virtual function the answer is pure virtual function okay uh, this was all about the mcqs of uh, computer networking and some uh, more topics from c++ i'll upload i'll uh, make a video for more mcqs stay tuned thank you